Welcome to Beyond the Microphone, a podcast about podcasters and the stories of how their shows came together, grew, and what they discovered along the way. I'm your host, Adam Baru. So as we get started today, I want to talk a little bit about the business side of podcasting because, you know, whereas many of us get started with, you know, really the only intention being to just try to make a difference, um, you know, we, we come into it with passion and purpose. It, you know, at some point, you know, you get the, the feels for wanting to, you know, turn it into at least something that can pay for itself because there are some expenses, you know, they're not big expenses if you're wanting to kind of, you know, keep at this. Um, and so, you know, this kind of like notion of the business side of podcasting creeps up. And, you know, for me and my experience of it, like, you know, I didn't care about that stuff at first. I just, you know, I have other businesses that kind of pay the bills for me. Um, and that, and so I, you know, I got into it with just this wanting to make a difference um, with my first podcast, The Change, which was on servant leadership and mental health. And, and I loved it. And I loved the conversations and everything that, that went into it. But, you know, the kind of the questions around trying to make it a business um, started to become a little bit more relevant because, yeah, I mean, I did want the cost of it to pay for itself. Like I was, um, you know, paying for an outsourced editor um, to do the sound engineering. And so there was that cost. And, you know, I had a marketing agency that was working with me and, and there was that cost um, and my assistant. And so, you know, it kind of crept in at least, you know, wanting wanting the podcast to at least cover the costs. And then beyond that, it's like, well, I love it so much. How can I, how can I keep this going? And so the thoughts kind of creep up. And so where I'm going to leave you with today to think about is setting a lot of intention with what you're doing in podcasting. And what I mean by that is obviously the passion and the purpose, everything that you got into podcasting for, that's priority number one. And you always need to remind yourself time and time again, you know, when you maybe start experiencing burnout, remember why you got into it. Okay. Now, when it comes to the intentional um, attributes of, you know, the business side of podcasting, what I mean by that is it it is going to consume your time. It's going to consume money. It's going to consume different resources. It's going to, you know, if you have a family, you know, it's going to involve their time potentially. Do it with intention. Create time blocks in your calendar. Um, you know, where, like how you're actually structuring episodes and interviewing and researching guests, like have intentionality with that so that there's consistency with with how you're producing your episode so that it it can be managed. Um, And, you know, one quick story. And, you know, the reason I kind of, you know, stopped doing the change again, I loved those conversations and the mission behind it. But I, I would interview a lot of authors. I mean, specifically, this is kind of what I remember is I would interview a lot of authors. And, you know, which with each of those, I always liked to read you know, one of the books by those authors so that I could do the amount of research that I wanted to do to to come to the episode prepared and to have an insightful interview. So that over time just, you know, started to become a little too much to manage. And so with Beyond the Microphone, I mean, I designed the structure of it with intention so that I can continue to do it with a very minimal demand on my time. So that, um, is kind of where we'll wrap up talking about the business of podcasting and i'd love to move on to introducing our guest here today her name is Haley rowe and she's the host of the podcast health coach nation a podcast for health coaches which boasts an exceptional listen score of 41 and she's ranked in the top one and a half percent in her in her category so hi Haley, welcome to beyond the microphone Hey, Haley, welcome to Beyond the Microphone. Hey, thank you for having me. Yeah, and, um, you know, so there's a little story about how we got connected here. um, We got connected through a mutual acquaintance um, who is just a phenomenal marketing expert. And I was sharing with you before we started, like, I got to go up to L.A. to be a part of a mini TEDx um, education program that he was leading and and see some different TEDx speakers and then do some hiking around LA. So 
fantastic weekend. Hopefully you had a great weekend. And um, July 4th, we are recording this, even though it's not going to be out till December. We're recording this all the way here, July 5th, 2023. So um, how was your holiday weekend? Did you do anything super fun and exciting to share that you'd like to share about? Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks again for having me. And the beauty of podcasting is that you can talk about fun things like this and capture it in history. So even when this comes out in December, we'll be uh, reflecting back to summer. But I had a great weekend. I went to the carnival with my niece and nephew. I went to fireworks. I went to dinner. I went to a new town to explore uh, with my boyfriend. That was fun. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it was a, a pretty busy weekend, but it was a good one for sure. Awesome. When and I so went mini golf. I think I forgot Ooh, about that. All right. <laughs> um, and I think if I'm remembering correctly, you're in the Chicago area um, that originally had lived in Southern California. So let's go back to, you know, kind of prior to when you got into podcasting, um, you know, yeah. tell us about your background, you know, personal, professional, and kind of ultimately that journey of what led you into this podcasting space. I mean, you're just kind of starting out with the question, you know, did you ever kind of yeah. see yourself going down this path? Yeah. Well, when I was a kid, I was very into singing, performing, entertaining. And I, okay. you know, have always done that as a hobby. And in college, I ended up getting my bachelor's in entrepreneurship and taking an interest in coaching and personal development at that stage in my life. And so mm -hmm. I got a bunch of different certifications, but I also became a podcast junkie. Like I just was in awe of how much you could learn from podcasts, even though I was getting an education, a bachelor's degree in entrepreneurship, I almost would say I've taken more from podcasts than my college degree. Now, connections in college and some of the things I learned in college were amazing, but I just was very much a big fan of there is so much out there. And I thought to myself, it would be so cool if I could have my own podcast one day and share what I've learned and share, you know, how I can help people and also use it as a way to connect with cool people because how fun is that, right? So I um, mm -hmm. did not start my podcast until around, I think, 2017 or 2018 because after I finished getting my bachelor's in entrepreneurship, I ended up working in business development and marketing for startups. And that in and of itself was extremely time consuming, a crash course in just learning everything about from copywriting to managing a team to marketing to how do you, mm -hmm. you know, acquire sales and clients and all of that. And so in 2017, one of the companies I worked for, because it was a startup, had to go on a huge pause for like a year or two. And so they had to let mm. the entire team go because they had a bunch of delays. And so I went off on my own coaching individuals on, you know, their business development and marketing. And that's when I decided, well, what a great way to put the word out if, if I was able to have a podcast. And it also podcasts were one of the things that got me through that hard time because I was, I was disappointed because I had just been told, you know, you are probably going to get a promotion. I just signed a one year yeah. lease to stay in Los Angeles. So I was like, all right, I guess this is my transition time. And so I started flooding my mind with positivity with podcasts and starting my own podcast. And that's kind of how I got into all of this. Okay. So, you know, you mentioned things like mindset just now. Um, and, and then I'm also curious, like, you know, how you ended up working with health coaches. So let's start with, with you and yourself. Um, you know, cause I, I have many conversations that are, that are similar, like, you know, where mindset comes into play, especially with the emotional courage that it takes to even get into podcasting. If it's not like something that you have experience of it, you know, or in it, you know, how did you kind of shape your mindset, um, you know, to really kind of like venture into this, this podcasting world where now, I mean, you mentioned you, you have, you know, some experience kind of, you know, in entertainment, like being at least kind of the center of attention, but, you know, sometimes that's hard for people. So, you know, your journey with your mindset and kind of coming off that, you know, experience, you know, kind of getting laid off or whatever that situation was and, and mm -hmm. getting started with podcasting. Yeah, so I was a little bit of a perfectionist in the early days of my podcast. So I remember the very first episode sitting, not knowing what I was doing, sitting in GarageBand, like editing out every um, every yeah. extra and, 
And it was driving me insane. And I was like, if I'm going to do this for years and be sustainably doing this, I cannot do this every week. And so I ended up having a very simple approach with my podcast. And yes, all the podcast production snobs will probably think that I'm wrong to be doing this, but I take lives and I repurpose them. And I was like, you know what, if I'm in this for the long game and this is just another channel for me, I'm okay with it being imperfect. So one of the mindset shifts I had to make was start messy, let it be bad, let your first episodes be kind of rough, and also being open to evolving with my audience. Like if you go back to my very first podcast episode, I've come so, so far. Like I, now I can, you know, my messaging has evolved and changed ever since I've gotten clients more and more results and my, you know, types of guests that I have has has changed. So just being open to knowing that you're not going to start perfect. Things are going to change. You can grow with your audience. You don't have to have every single thing about your message figured out from the get-go. And figuring out, too, how to manage yourself. Like for me, being your own boss and having your own podcast, you have to learn how to honor commitments to yourself and not just say, well, I started this podcast and now it's fine if I'm inconsistent. I had some inconsistent times in the beginning but now it's been every week, nonstop, you know, no matter what. And um, it was a good podcasting was a good way for me to develop that discipline. Hey there, fellow podcasters. This is Tori Barker of the Creative Visionaries podcast, and I'm excited to introduce you to PodTask the all-in-one platform designed to streamline your workflow and take your show to the next level. If you're tired of feeling overwhelmed by the tasks required to manage your podcast, then check out PodTask, where you can easily streamline your podcasting process and simplify your workflow. Say goodbye to the stress of managing multiple tasks and deadlines, and hello to a more efficient and productive podcasting experience. And it doesn't just stop there. Podcast also offers AI-based marketing tools that give your podcast a competitive edge. As a fellow podcaster, I know from experience how important it is to have a reliable and efficient tool like Podcast to keep you on track. It helps save me so much time in post-production, which allows me to focus on what really matters, creating great content for my listeners. So if you're ready to take your podcast to the next level, Head over to podcast.com and sign up for a free forever plan and get started today. Yeah, so that advice is is golden. And as an example, I mean, you, you know, you dropped off. So you didn't get to hear my intro because you're you had some Internet issues or whatever. Um, So I want to use that as an example to highlight. Yeah, like the idea of chasing perfection First of all, it's it's rarely ever going to be achievable, but I think it adds a lot of like internal conflict as well and stress and and just adds a lot of, you know, complexity into a process that that can be simple and fun. And so I, you know, because you dropped off, you missed I was talking about the business of podcasting and really like setting a lot of intentionality with everything that you're doing and I was kind of sharing with my former podcast the change, you know, I interviewed a lot of authors and, you know, and so I, you know, for myself to get prepared, I would read at least one of their books, you know, to just, you know, do the research I felt necessary. And like you, I was probably a perfectionist. Like, you know, we were chasing a high production value. We were spending a ton of time in editing on the ums and ahs and gaps and this, that, the other thing. And, you know, exactly to what the experiences that sounds like you were dealing with. I mean, it's, there's a lot of work behind that. If you're chasing perfection and you're, you know, you want everything to be just perfect because that's what you think your audience is kind of expecting. Number one, they're not. Number two, it just makes it more difficult. You know, if you want to just look at it from a time perspective, you know, the act of producing an episode is going to be amplified by, you know, trying to achieve perfection. It sounds like, you know, you're right there with me on that. 100%. Yeah. And nowadays, thankfully, um, I have a virtual assistant who helps me just take the recording, you know, turn it into show notes, etc. 
Um, so I think the simpler you can make the system, the more you're able to stick with it. And it also freed me up to focus more on the actual interview itself and the guests and all that kind of stuff. So as soon as you can, it would be great to outsource it, I would say. But yeah. um, it doesn't have to be extremely expensive. It doesn't have to be this huge pro you know, production value. And you even teach people how to do it and make it simple, right? So you can do that too and, and learn from a mentor. Yeah, and you know, I th I think the important thing that you just said was, you know, where you allocate your time. Like what is the best most strategic use of Haley's time in in terms of your own podcast? I mean, it's going to be the interview and, you know, some some vision in terms of like going after how you want to grow and reach your audience and that sort of thing and um, you know, using something like a virtual assistant to kind of take care of the stuff that are you know, uses of our time that are not really great strategic uses of our time. As much as I like the editing and we use Descript and it really helps us kind of streamline a lot of things, like it's not going to be the most strategic use of my time. I could allocate my time into, you know, focusing on how to grow my podcast, right? And right. Uh, so I want to kind of stick with the, the, the use of VAs in particular. It's something that I'm even exploring. I'm not doing yet. I have a like an actual assistant, but she just went on maternity leave. So I'm now kind of like taking over a lot of stuff um, and trying to think about how and what I can offload. Like how, what what is a recommended approach for thinking about what we're doing as podcasters? What can be outsourced? And then how do you find a VA and how do you kind of integrate them into your flow and your what you're doing. Yeah. So with Health Coach Nation, my podcast, it's um, something where I had to ask myself, okay, what's my hourly rate in general in my business? And can mm -hmm. I have somebody help me with this for less than my hourly rate that would free me up to do what you're saying, like focus more on my income generating activities, my things that my time is best spent on. So that's the first question to ask yourself. And then the second thing is to say, when I've been doing it myself, what has been my process and record yourself doing it or, you know, write it out. But then you can look for somebody to help you who could either improve the process, simplify the process, or just do your process. And you can hire what we call like a, a doer virtual assistant who is not very expensive because they're just literally doing the exact steps you wrote out for them, as opposed to they're not coming up with the strategy. They're not a specialist. Um, so, you know, you can, decide what kind of virtual assistant you're looking for. You're looking for somebody who can also help with strategy and doesn't need a lot of training and already knows how to do everything. And this is like their specialty or someone you could train the steps and, and that's that, right? Um, yeah. And then where to find people. I love asking for referrals, so like from other business friends. I love, um, I've used, actually, I found my very first virtual assistant in a Facebook group and she's still with me to this day. Um, I found others through, um, as I said, word of mouth, you know, Fiverr, um, mm -hmm. that website, Elance or Upwork, I think is what it's called nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, Nate Hirsch's uh, Free Up is a good one. Um, so I, I don't know if it's Nate Hirsch's anymore, but it used to be. Okay. So freeup.net or something like that. So there are some really great resources out there. And I, it is tedious at first. I think a lot of times we think, oh, well, you know, it's just going to be easier if I do it myself. But long term, yeah. it's not. It's going to short term be right. annoying because you're going to have to train and look for somebody and all of that. But long term, it's way better. And the one thing I want to add, Adam, though, is strategically using your podcast. If we are talking about using it for business, there was so many things I wasn't doing to make my podcast intentional, meaning like I was never promoting my freebie on it. I was never talking about what I did on the podcast. It was always only highlighting my guests. Um, I right. never really had a good call to action in the beginning. I, I didn't cover objections in my podcast. I think people sometimes forget that part of content, like a comprehensive mm. content plan also overcomes common you know, hesitations or FAQs or you know, objections that your wow. audience has. So I also, in the most recent years, was like, how can I use the podcast more strategically and incorporate some of those things? And I don't... Um, have ads on my podcast, except for it's sponsored by my company. <laughs> and we put a little yeah. plug about what I do, right? So exactly. if you're going to outsource with your podcast, 
I would hope that you're using it for your business so that there's, you know, a return somewhat with your podcast as opposed to if this is just a hobby for you, yeah, maybe you don't outsource it unless you are okay with, you know, investing in it. All right. Yeah, I completely agree. So great feedback. Thanks for sharing that. I want to ask a little bit about your fast framework. So getting back into what you're doing, your business and your podcast, like, you know, your fast framework, you share marketing and business tips, um, you know, within your Health Coach Nation podcast and also on your Facebook group. So tell us a little bit about what that is and how you, you know, help coaches through that. Yeah. So just to kind of recap, I help health, life, and mindset coaches primarily with getting their business off the ground, booking clients consistently, structuring their offers, things like that. And what I've found is um, I have a framework called Grow Your Business the Fast Way, and it's an acronym. And Mm -hmm. I came up with it one day in the sauna of all places because I was like, how do I explain what the most important principles are to get, you know, exposure and visibility and all that kind of stuff. And so it stands Mm -hmm. for followers, action, sales, time management, and transformation. And what I mean by that with followers is, first of all, who are you looking to attract? Where do they hang out? And what's going to be your process for taking them from a cold lead to an actual client? Um, and then, and that's different for every client. You know, we might customize what marketing channel or channels you're going to use. Um, action is how do you create content messaging and uh, an offer that's compelling enough that people want to take action, they want to reach out to you. So this comes down to how you write your copy, how you communicate, that kind of thing. Sales is your sales process. So how are you converting leads? What's your, do you do calls? Do you have a webinar? What does that look like? How do we improve the conversions on that? How do you coach through the common objections in your marketing? Upsells and downsells, all that. And then time management is where what is the best use of your time? And if you're confused or you have shiny object syndrome or you jump around, um, I love to help my clients get some structure in place, prioritize, not feel like overwhelm is taking over. And then yeah. transformation is two things. Personal transformation required to get to your goals. So going back to what we were talking about before, overcoming things like perfectionism or I'm just not tech savvy and so I can't do this or whatever it is for you that's holding you back. And um, the other part of transformation is making sure your program or what you offer is clear. There's a point A to point B. You have client wins that you can be sharing in your marketing. You know what makes you different, that kind of thing. So really just the marketing and sales process, where to be spending your time. Those are the kinds of things I help clients with. And um, that's a little bit about it. Okay, thank you. And um when it comes to just your experience, you know, working with coaches, you know, putting your program together, what, what have been some of your highs and lows? Maybe speak to us about what some of your, you know, memories of your, of your greatest wins have been and maybe what some of the challenges, yeah. you know, were that you experienced. So many highs and lows for sure. And it's um, a roller coaster I, ride, right? <laughs> yeah. I can't even, I still, I'm years into this and I still feel like fresh and I still feel like there's so much more I need to improve and so much more I want to do. Um, yeah. But as far I, as some lows and highs, I would say a low has been, you know, I think. I had to learn how to separate my personal worth from my business. So I Mm. used to take things very personally. So if I got a no or rejection, you know, I was, I was bummed because I loved talking to the person. I was excited about the project. And so that was something I had to learn to do. Um, Another low I would say is I got my, I built a huge community on Facebook. And I mean, when I say huge, it was huge to me. Okay. It was like 4,300 members. Okay. And it grew every week organically. And it was called health coach nation, which don't join that group anymore because it was hacked. Okay. So that was a huge Mm. low. I had to start from scratch, which is why I have my new group, the marketing hub group for service providers and coaches. You're welcome to join that one. But it was a devastating because I lost all the old content in there. I, you know, I, which made me thankful for having an email list, for not betting all my eggs in just one platform or one basket. And that was a bummer though, because I had to restart my whole page. Also, my business Mm. page had over 7,000 followers and and likes and past content I was going to repurpose and all sorts of stuff. Huge low. Highs though, I got to interview Amy Porterfield this year, which was a huge deal to me because to me, she's one of the leaders in our field. 
and uh, her team reached out to me asking to interview her, which was like, awesome. oh my gosh, something I'm doing is getting out there. <laughs> yeah. um, and highs, of course, also is client wins. Like I keep a folder. So anytime you get discouraged in your business, I go back to my client wins folder where I have screenshots and emails and testimonials. And I just remind myself, this is why I'm doing it, to help coaches gain an internal locus of control that they can be a business owner. They are capable of more than they thought. And it's just more of getting the structure in place, you know, following through, being willing to get uncomfortable with feelings and all the things that business brings. Um, and then I also would say it's been really cool to start building a, a little bit of a team and um, just having that support. But I mean, I could go on for 45 minutes about highs and lows stuff there. And uh, yeah, the most recent loss though was that that hack was quite annoying. I, I can't believe that. I can't, I definitely want to ask you offline about that because um, perhaps maybe even there's a tip on how to avoid that situation that we can mm -hmm. share yeah. um, in the show notes or in, in the blog page or whatever. But as we close here today, I, I usually ask a couple questions on the theme of discoveries. I mean, the first question is kind of probably wrapped into, you know, everything that you've been discussing here. But are there any other discoveries that you'd like to share with the audience here today just about podcasting and how being in this space has kind of evolved for you over time? Like what what sort of discoveries just as a podcaster, a content yeah. creator, have you discovered through your journey? Oh, oh, wow. I like that question. Number one, people who listen to your podcast will be way higher converters because they are hearing you in their ears. They feel like they know you. It's an amazing lead nurturing way to, to connect with your people. Uh, number two, don't be afraid to play bigger in who you ask to be a guest and who you pitch yourself to be a guest for. I thought, oh, you know, I can't shoot big. Like I could never interview somebody like Amy Porterfield. because She's million, you know, mm -hmm. millions of people, blah, blah, blah. And that's just not true. If you come at it from what do I have to offer and how can I be useful to this person and how can I make it as seamless as possible for them? And you are good at communicating that and or you get on your first kind of bigger podcast, you can use that to, you know, start getting more of it, right? So I think that's a, a big one. And then I think the other thing is um, there's so many resources out there like podcast networks like um, Guestio and you know, matchmaker.fm and stuff. So it's so, it's never been easier, in my opinion, to find podcasts to be on and find collaboration partners and even explore, treat the podcast as a way to build relationships with people in your field and uplift your network because there can be so many fun other ways that you can connect and, and collaborate with your guests. Some of my past guests, we've later gone on to do webinars together. We have um, referred each other. We are friends. I mean, it's just, there's, there's so many opportunities with that. So uh, keep an open mind, keep in touch with your guests. And those would be some aha moments I've had. I love that you just highlighted that, especially the, the going big part, because, um, you know, something I've dealt with in my own life is imposter syndrome. But, you know, we, I, I came into podcasting with a passion and a purpose around trying to you know, normalize the mental health conversation with my former podcast, The Change. And yeah, like I kind of got to the point where it, like there's an emotional courage and, you know, so much in my life, like the greatest opportunities for growth have always, you know, come with the greatest challenges that I've been faced with. And, you know, kind of got to the point where I'm like, if I'm going to make a difference, it, it's going to require me to go big because there's no, you know, there's no benefit gained in playing it small. And in fact, our mutual, one of our mutual connections, Kristen Taylor, um, who's my executive coach and good friend, she came on, I think she was episode two of my podcast, The Change. And that was something that she was suffering from going, mm -hmm. you know, this, this idea of getting past a, a certain comfort zone, getting her, her, past some belief systems around her own capabilities and uh you know what she is achieving now is so just as a friend i i just feel so like happy for her you know so yeah final question again on the theme of discoveries um yeah. so you've talked a lot of it about 
you know, your journey and, and helping health coaches and just in podcasting and the business side of things, what's been some of the greatest discoveries personally that you've learned about yourself mm. that you've learned through your podcasting experience? Totally. Oh my gosh. Um, wait, can I just say, ask one question to you? Yeah. Yeah. Did you, how did you meet Kristen? Did you guys meet on LinkedIn? I probably met her through your efforts because yes, LinkedIn, okay. I was marketed I to, that. which okay. she actually came to me later and said, it wasn't me reaching out to you. It was, it was an automation. Yes. So, yes. So here's the, the cool thing about the, why this is such a full circle moment is mm -hmm. because that client of ours, Kristen had the courage to, you know, invest in her business, do LinkedIn with us. We did, we do LinkedIn lead gen services. Uh, you guys connected, you had an amazing coaching relationship with her and you now had more courage because you, she helped you with imposter syndrome. And then you started a podcast and then we connected because of Kristen and yeah. my other, um, colleague, Paul. So it's just like, look at the ripple effect of when you get the confidence yep. to put yourself out there. It amazing things can happen. You just don't know one door leads to the next, but anyways, I want to go back to your question about any aha personally, aha personal moments. Okay. So mine would probably be you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And so for me, I'm totally okay with putting myself out there now and getting rejected because it's way more efficient and has a bigger upside potential than not doing anything at all or just thinking I'm not good enough. So do it scared is probably one of my biggest things. And then I think the other thing would be um, it, just the consistency over needing every single podcast to be mind blowing, I think is more important because I have had podcasts. I got to be honest, there's been maintenance times where I haven't been, you know, putting what I feel is like groundbreaking information out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but, I can relate to that. Yep. Yeah, but you still realize even what you think is common sense and nobody would find value from, those are some of the people like that I hear from, they say that's their favorite episode. And I'm just like, yeah. huh, really? Okay. So don't assume, don't make assumptions. That's my other suggestion. Don't make assumptions that just because you know this already or just because you think this isn't great that somebody else won't. That's a fantastic way to conclude here today. I love that. That's a really a genuine and empathetic sentiment is to just, yeah, kind of like, you know, we kind of perceive things one way, but it's really based on our own set of belief systems. And so you're right. Like, um, and I, and I could share that experience as well. I mean, just getting out of my own way sometimes and just, you know, what I think to be, you know, a set of beliefs, you know, it's not that everybody's going to share that as well. So thank, thank you so much for, for speaking on that and for coming on to be on the microphone today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Adam. And um, if your audience does want to learn more about how they can attract clients and um, better partnerships with podcasting, I would love to offer them a free class on that. And uh, maybe we could put that in the show notes if that's cool with you or 100%. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Thank so look so for all of Haley's links in the show notes, um, as well as our webpage um, to find out more about her and her program. So thanks again, Haley, for coming on. Thank you, Adam. Haley Rowe is a marketing and sales coach and LinkedIn lead generation service provider. She helps service-based business owners, especially coaches, build out their client attraction process, get more time back, and boost sales without being held back by social media overwhelm. Haley has been named one of the top 25 coaches in Chicago and one of the top six business podcasts for health coaches. Since 2010, Haley has worked in the coaching industry and in business, develop business development marketing for startups. Haley's philosophy, you can have amazing service and impact to make, but without a strong mindset and sales and marketing plan, your business will remain a hobby. If you're enjoying Beyond the Microphone, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening, as well as to our YouTube channel. You can find links to all of these in our episode show notes. And if you're looking to get help and guidance in your own podcasting journey, 
I'd love to help you find out some ways that we can work together on strategy and direction so that you can take your passion and purpose and continue creating amazing content for your listeners. Please reach out to me through www.eiqmediallc.com so that we can take that passion and purpose to the next level. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you next time on Beyond the Microphone. Beyond the Microphone is produced and distributed by EIQ Media Group, LLC. Elevate your emotional IQ with podcasts and content focused on entrepreneurship, overcoming adversity, stories of emotional courage, women's health, aging, and more. Mm-hmm.